Well, bad news. The air conditioner stopped working in my tractor. Oh, one, oh, what happened here? Oh, shoot. I don't know. Are you, are you gonna try to start planting today, Dad? Yeah. Gonna start today. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Tara, a farmer from Northern California, and this channel is mainly about farming, but sometimes it's not. So I just got home from the farm, from working all day, and a question I often get asked is, do I make my own wine? I actually don't make my own wine right now. I'm not sure if the day will come. You know, I never say never, but at this point, I really enjoy the farming part, so I don't see me making wine in my future right now. But I do like wine. Oddly enough, I really don't drink that much wine and I'm really bad at like being adventurous and trying new stuff. So I recently discovered this website called Bright Cellars and you fill out a form about what kind of wine you like or different flavors you like and they actually pick six bottles of wine to send you. So my box of wine came today and I'm pretty excited because like I said, I'm not normally very adventurous. So I just wanna show you guys what I get. Let's check this out. Ooh, a little card. Oh, this is so cute. Okay, Bright Cellars Wine Wisdom. My mom's a librarian. I feel like I can do this where I read it to you guys, but I won't read everything. Okay, so it gives you how to uncork properly, how to store and serve red wines and white wines. So that's great, some little education. Okay, so it came with a little education card about every single wine I got. Their name, where they're from. This one's from Napa. This one's from Lodi. That's like my neighbor and what their flavors are. This is really cool. So a little education card on every wine that's in my box. Okay, let me just show you each bottle really quick. Okay, I am so excited. These all look great. I've never tried any of them, so that's the best part. It's all gonna be new things. If you guys are interested in checking them out, they are actually sharing a code for you guys where you can save 50% on your very first box. I'll put it in the description below. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys get to try some new wines. So even though I'm not making wine right now, you can just support the entire industry. I'm really excited to try this Chardonnay from Lodi because they're like my neighbors and their logo is, this bottle logo is gorgeous. So I think I'm gonna pop this one in the fridge and this might be the first one I try. All right, back to our scheduled shenanigans. Okay, just got out to the farm this morning and my dad and I went and picked up a new implement for my tractor which if you guys have been watching my videos, you might have a little idea of what it is. We went and picked up a rears duster from Garden Tractor. Hi, Coco. It's my grandma's dog. Um, so we went and got a rears duster. This is the same exact duster that I borrowed from Charlie last week that worked so well. And my dad just kind of drooled over it. I was looking at a few different brands of dusters, but the reason we ended up going with the rears is I was just so happy with it, driving it last week. And it just, it's built so solid. So I feel like, you know, as long as I take care of it every year, we're gonna try to store it in the shop over winter. Hopefully this thing could last me like my lifetime of dusting or 10 years, you know, so. That's why we ended up getting it or I ended up getting it because it's like I just want something that's gonna last and do a great job and that I don't have to worry about every week because I am sulfur dusting 
every week for 10 weeks and if and you also sulfur dust normally in the evenings so it just is nice to have something that I don't have to worry about every week so right now I'm hooked up to Matt's duster which was the duster I was borrowing and I am so grateful that he was willing to loan me a duster it like really really I'm sad that it didn't work out but you know things happen so I'm gonna unhook from this one and put it over to the side and then I'm gonna hook up to the new duster and try to get it calibrated at some point today I might be dusting tonight but it's supposed to be super windy and if it is I'm gonna be waiting till tomorrow night also I have not been explaining much about sulfur dust so I just wanted to let you guys know the reason I do sulfur dusting and all vineyards do sulfur dusting is because it helps avoid powdery mildew and it is an organic product and it's just the easiest thing you can do to avoid getting powdery mildew in your vineyard okay let's get to work All right, it has been a week since my last dusting. We got my brand new duster all hooked up and I'm gonna head out. Um, I actually might be able to finish before it gets too dark. We'll see. It, it seems like some people have reasons to dust in the evenings and some people say just go for it. So I'm gonna just go for it today, see how it goes. Look at that beauty just ready to be used we got it all um calibrated earlier so it is ready to go and uh, we'll head out to the field Well, bad news, the air conditioner stopped working in my tractor. So, it's a hot box in here. If you guys have cab tractors, you know you just really can't drive it without the air conditioner working because it just heats up so fast. But I also can't not dust. So, I was hoping to dust a little earlier today, but that's not gonna happen. I will have to come back when it's dark and hope that I can actually finish dusting, that it won't be too hot. I guess I'll go home for a couple hours, play with my chickens, and come back when it's dark. See how it goes. Obviously, you guys can't see me very well. I actually even have my little cap light on. Sorry, guys. Um, but I just got back to the farm. It's 8.30 p.m. So hopefully my tractor won't heat up. I do have a very thin long sleeve on, so I can change into my t-shirt if I have to. But I'm gonna try to get dusting done, and I'm estimating it's gonna take three to four hours. So fingers crossed, here we go. All right, this weekend I got so much stuff done, but at the same time, it's like you never get enough done. Oh, one, oh, what happened here? Oh, shoot. I left the door to my chicken coop open, so a few of the chickens got out. Okay, I'm gonna try to get them back in because I just moved 
some of my new chicks into the coop and I don't want them to free range yet. I like to keep them locked in there for a couple days before I free range them. But I know exactly how to get the chickens back in. Grublies. This will get all the chickens. Come on. Come on. There we go. There we go. This is Grublies. And every time I get a, ch a chicken gets out that I don't want out, this is the way to get them back in. <laughs> okay, so let me close these doors up really quick. Anyways, this is the door. I accidentally left this guy open last night. All right, let the rescues out. How's, that, how, how's your ladies doing? There we go. Keep it moving. One more. How you feeling in there, baby? She hasn't been feeling too well the last couple days. I could tell. Come on. There's a good girl. There's a pretty girl. Okay, so last night was a big night. I moved my three olive eggers that I'm pretty sure two are roosters into the coop. So there we go. Um, there they are there. I'm pretty sure two are roosters. We'll see. That that brown one, definitely a rooster. That's Oliver. And I think the all black one. Oh, gosh darn it, chicken. <sighs> Come on, girl. Get in there. All right. Anyways. So Oliver for sure. I think one of the black ones is, and his name will be Templeton. And then I think the other black one hopefully is a hen. And... We moved Mama and all her babies in here. And I did, I did lock them in a crate last night. I won't, I won't do this every night, but I just, it was the easiest way to transport them all. There's Mama, there's babies, there they go. Anyway, she'll nest in here with them, but I wanted this, like I said, I put them all in that last night and it was the easiest way to move them all together. Least amount of stress. Um, mama and babies have been free ranging with all the chickens for the past few days. So I figured it was time and she'll protect them. I mean, if any other chickens get close to them, she's not too happy about it. So that happened last night, which was big. I also picked up a new chicken coop this weekend that someone gave me. Um, right here so what i think i'm gonna end up doing this week is actually put the rescues in this coop and then i got some meat birds i can't remember if i said it in my last video or not but i got three chicks that i thought were going to be layers and quickly turned out that they're meat birds <laughs> um they're almost three weeks old and i'll show you guys those so i'm going to put them in this coop that way i can move them on fresh grass every day we're also having chick watch 2020 my bantams, good morning, Roscoe. Let's see. Nothing. Bummer. I did not candle any of the bantam eggs, so they could not even be fertile. They should have hatched between, like, because they weren't all from one day. It's like between Sunday and Tuesday, and today's Monday. So I'll give them a couple extra days, and if they don't hatch, I don't know what I'll do. I didn't really want to buy bantam chicks. I was just letting them hatch them themselves. All right, let's check on all my other chicks. I have to show you guys what I got. Good morning. So this is the meaties. Their first night without a heat lamp. They're about three weeks old and they did great. So I'm putting them here in here at night and outside during the day until I can get them in the omelet go. So if you've never raised meat birds, there you go. They're huge. They're huge for three weeks old and they're so solid. Okay, so yesterday my dad helped AJ and I moved this massive brooder to our house. It's in our garage. This was my dad's brooder and he honestly has no idea how old it is. I mean, it could be 50 years old plus. It was handed down to my dad from someone 
And then my dad had it when I was a kid. It hasn't even been used for 10 years. And then we moved it all here. It's got five layers. I'm only using three right now, but it's so awesome because it has these nice little heat trays. And I and I talked about it in another video. Um, heat trays, it's got food and water, but I had like two layers sitting on the ground. So now I got the whole thing. This is actually a layer here too, but I'm gonna just put some storage in there. And now it's up off the ground. Um, and I probably won't use the top layer because it's so tall but I love it so much. My plan is to keep the chicks in there until they're about three weeks old. That way I know they're safe from predators, they're warm, and then around three weeks old, I'll start putting them outside during the day in one of those small coops and then putting them back in here at night. There might be an easier way to do that, I'm not really sure, but I don't wanna keep them in these cages until they're six weeks old like around three weeks especially because the weather's nice i feel like they can go out during the day but they still need heat at night so all the babies seem super happy i know it's a little dark in here right now but we've got a handful in here a few older ones here and then these ones um are the same age as these guys down here but one of my friends is picking them up so i've separated them but yeah i love it so much super brooder right there. Here is my dad's alfalfa field. I have some videos from the fall where we planted it and we got it all ready and it's looking gorgeous. I mean, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. I feel like this is alfalfa people can be proud of, you know. It's almost got, almost had no weeds in it. We have like a few patches, like you can see that that uh, brown spot right there got sprayed, but I mean, it's a pretty dang clean field. My dad's proud of it. He did a good job. I have to say, I am not too involved with the corn this year, thus far. Um, we have not started irrigating alfalfa yet. I'm pretty sure I'll be helping with that. But like, I really didn't do any corn prep and we're starting planting so i'm going to get a little clip of planting but honestly it's been my dad and the guys and i've really been working in the vineyard so this year is different than years in the past but i'm excited and i'm happy that i have the ability to work in the vineyard and i just help my dad when i can on his farm it is may 4th and we got the corn planter out I don't know. Are you are you gonna try to start planting today, Dad? Yeah. Gonna start today, hopefully. If everything goes right. We have an eight row white corn planter. Filling it with fertilizer. nothing babies all right I just got back home so we started planting today and it is just like go 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 right now um I definitely need to get better at taking some video when we're getting so crazy busy um but I'm gonna take care of my chickens and tomorrow I'll probably be back in the vineyard and helping getting seed and everything out to the planter but it is definitely go time between corn vineyard my growing chicken obsession i hope you guys hit that subscribe button and i hope you hit the thumbs up button thank you guys so much i'll see you later